Welcome to the third part of the Unified Namespace Essentials series. To recap, in part one, we introduced the concept of UNS. In part two, we dove deeper into concepts of UNS and explored best practices for structuring it. In part three, we will cover the following. Why MQTT SparkPlug is best suited for implementing the Unified Namespace the minimum technical requirements for the unified namespace, MQTT Spark Black topic structure for unified namespace, and the Paris and Scholz methods for UNS structuring with MQTT Spark Black. Stay tuned, subscribe to our channel, and let us get started. Two main functions characterize the unified namespace. First, it acts as a single source of truth for all data and information in an organization. Second, it serves as the central messaging broker such that instead of using many point-to-point -point communication interfaces, you route your messages through a single communication interface. But what is the most efficient way to implement this abstract UNS concept? You need a technology that allows you to organize data in a central location based on your organizational structure and events. Data centralization gives every network participant access to information. They will know where and how to find relevant information. Additionally, the technology needs to make the data transparent and available to all who have the authority to access it. While a few communication technologies may fit the profile, MQTT is by far the most commonly used technology for implementing the unified namespace. And here's why. MQTT is the most commonly used messaging protocol for the Internet of Things. The protocol is lightweight, event-driven, and connects devices using the publish-subscribe communication pattern. Data producers and consumers communicate via topics through a centralized server and MQTT broker. On the other hand, MQTT SparkBlack is an open-source software specification that provides MQTT clients with a framework to seamlessly integrate data from applications, sensors, devices, and gateways within an MQTT infrastructure in a bi-directional and interoperable way. SparkBlack defines a consistent MQTT topic namespace, state management, and payload format to achieve this. It's important to mention here that SparkBlack and Flat MQTT are equally capable of implementing the unified namespace. However, SparkBlack has added advantages with things like auto discovery and defined data types. Due to the above stated characteristics, MQTT and SparkBlack meet the minimum technical requirements for a UNS implementation, which are open architecture, edge driven, lightweight, and report by exception. MQTT and SparkBlack specifications are publicly available for implementation. As such, many organizations have adopted these specifications, making it easy to swap or add components from different IIoT vendors into the UNS data ecosystem. The creators of MQTT originally built it to monitor all pipelines over satellite, so they designed it to have minimum overhead to fulfill the bandwidth efficient and reliability requirements. Additionally, MQTT uses a binary protocol, significantly reducing the communication overhead. MQTT SparkPlug's report by exception rule ensures that data producers publish data to the UNS only when they detect changes in the monitored value. Reporting changes only enables the UNS to maintain the current state of its architectural components without continuously polling the data sources to establish a current state. Data is pushed into the UNS by nodes at the edge of the network as a single source of truth, as opposed to collecting modeled machine data from different intermediary sources. Let us look at how MQTT SparkPlug topic structure enables UNS structuring. In a published subscribe architecture, subscribers can use MQTT topic structure to filter messages with wildcard subscriptions. 
This allows you to design hierarchical data access and specify data source location to implement a unified namespace. Using the ISA 95 common data model, which is enterprise, site, area, line, and cell, it is recommended to map your organizational structure on to the MQTT topic structure. As mentioned earlier, Sparkplug extends the functionality of MQTT by specifying a well-defined topic namespace like this one on the screen. This topic namespace defined by Sparkplug can also be used by a unified namespace structure with the added benefit of session state management and consistency in data structures. However, Sparkplug restricts the number of topic elements you can have, such that you quickly run out of elements to map your ISA 95 organizational structure. The good news is that approaches have been developed within the Industry 4.0 community to accommodate longer hierarchical structures in the Sparkplug topic namespace, most notably by Matthew Paris and David Schultz. Let us have a look at the Paris method. In the Paris method, you put your entire enterprise structure in your group ID using delimiters to separate the categories. For example, using a colon as delimiter to your Sparkplug topic namespace becomes like this. You could also use the following format for your Sparkplug topic namespace. However, avoiding using the edge node ID as part of your ISA 95 hierarchy is advisable as this could cause some conflict. The edge node ID element has to uniquely identify an MQTT edge of network node within your infrastructure as per the Sparkplug specifications. While this Paris method is simple to use, there is a challenge. An MQTT application receiving the Sparkplug message by subscribing to the root topic needs to break apart the group ID and republish into flat MQTT topics to convert from a flat structure back to an expanded tree structure. For example, because the group ID is globally unique from the perspective of the enterprise, the data can move around to any broker using standard MQTT bridges without topic conflicts. Therefore, an IoT platform is not required for each MQTT broker to decode and then re-encode the data up one level in the topic hierarchy. Additionally, the use of delimiters within the group ID allows you to standardize how your applications pass topics across your enterprise. Otherwise, each application must be hard-coded to align with the topic hierarchy provided by a broker it connects to. Next, let us look into the Schultz method. The basis for the Schultz method is that you don't have to use a single MQTT broker to build a unified namespace. Instead, you can deploy multiple brokers at various levels of your enterprise to facilitate communication at their level using a local unified namespace. Then you use an IoT platform to consume all low-level unified namespaces and republish everything to the enterprise unified namespace. To get a clear picture, imagine you have deployed one broker per area at a manufacturing site. You could have each device publishing to its area broker using the following topic namespace. After that, you can use an IoT platform to subscribe to the area broker and then publish out everything to an enterprise broker using this topic namespace. While this approach allows you to avoid delimiters that might require some complicated parsing mechanisms, it introduces a lot of complexity and operational overhead. To summarize, the unified namespace allows for a consistent and standardized way of organizing and accessing data across different departments and systems. This allows for easier collaboration and information sharing, improving efficiency and decision making. It also allows for better tracking and traceability of products and materials, reducing errors and waste. Overall, the unified namespace helps to streamline and optimize the manufacturing process, thus accelerating digital transformation. Over this series, we defined the unified namespace, explored common mistakes and misconceptions, and laid out the best practices for structuring it. Now that you understand the unified namespaces foundational concepts, 
you can start incorporating it into your digital transformation strategy with the support of the HiveMQ platform. HiveMQ is a fully SparkPlug compatible MQTT broker in both on-premise and cloud-managed versions. Try it out today and start creating a unified namespace. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.